Hello, my name is Craig and welcome to this channel which is about trying to help you to get the best out of your scientific images. So here in Scotland we have been in lockdown now for 110 weeks. Well maybe it's only 10 weeks but it seems kind of like that. And I thought what I'd like to do in this video is to give a brief overview of a project that I've been involved with over the last year. And in that project what we were trying to do was to take confocal microscopy data through to a virtual reality environment in which we could use that data to teach students. There's not a lot of detail in the components of this video, it's just an overview, a trailer of, if you like, of the, the type of work that we did, but it perhaps goes some way to explaining why you might want to have a channel on image analysis and image processing. So I hope you enjoy this. We start in image J and here we see a four channel cost cell. It's been labelled with stains for the nucleus, actin, tubulin and mitochondria. And we can combine these four channels to make a Z projection and I've shown that in a previous tutorial. The four channels are then imported into 3D Slicer and all four channels are shown here as volumetric renderings. We can see the rendering more clearly if we view in the 3D window only. You can get that from the layout menu. So 3D Slicer does a pretty good job at rendering the four channels and it offers quite a few options for volume rendering. I'll probably make another tutorial specifically covering the volume module and volume rendering in general at a, a later date. However, to get the data into a format that can be used by animation and VR applications, we need to threshold and segment the data. The 3D Slicer offers a variety of methods for data segmentation. So here's a segmented cell nucleus. It's basically just an isosurface or a wireframe mesh that's been given a surface as a colour. And we can fly inside and see that it's a, a hollow object. And having already thresholded and segmented the other three channels, I can now bring them in one at a time. So here's the actin. Um, and we can see the mitochondria. And then finally the tubulin. And I've got another tutorial on the channel called 3D Slicer Thresholding and Segmentation that details this part of the process. And we can now export these segmentations to other packages. So here we are in the Glasgow Life Sciences Sketchfab page. And this is a collection of data that's been provided by researchers in the College of Veterinary and Life Sciences at University of Glasgow. And some of the data has been modelled in 3D animation packages, but most of it's captured using image scanning devices of one type or another. And here's that cost cell. It's been exported from 3D Slicer, trimmed in Mesh Lab, and then uploaded to Sketchfab, which is a fantastic way of making the 3D data available on a variety of web enabled devices. And can also display models in virtual reality using a cardboard viewer or a fully mounted, a full, full head mounted display. So we took a selection of the models from our current Sketchfab collection and we placed them within a virtual reality gallery. And this is the view from the VR headset and it shows what the student would see when examining the exhibits. And to move around the gallery, the user can move using the handset and green teleport tool. And the user can pick up the exhibits and can examine these by switching off uh, various views. Um, and here we see the external surface of a sheep embryo which can be switched off to reveal the inner structures which also have labels on them. 
Finally, we uploaded the VR gallery to our VR teaching lab. And here we see one of our level three classes enjoying the experience. So hopefully this gives you an idea of how you can take biological data sets and process them in a way that can make them available for viewing in VR, in a web browser, or as shown here in a fully immersive VR environment.